The group continued to make their way through Howe's. The tension of anxiety within the group oh, oops, tense. Zeke was sure no one wanted to get caught. He looked up ahead and saw Bonnie, Shell, and Rebecca. All right, we need to get Clem and get and we're out of here, this document said. We also need to kill Carver, Becca said. Wait, what? Luke said. We didn't discuss this. If he lives, he'll just hunt us down. There's nothing to discuss, the young man said. Luke seemed that he wanted to argue, but he knew the man was right. All right, how should we go with this? Luke asked. Carver's got Clem in his office, and he had Wise set up a cot for her, Bonnie said, as she gestured to the stocky man who nodded in response. That's all I needed to know, Kenny muttered, before he started to walk away from the rest of the group. Kenny! Sarita whispered. She wanted to follow him, but Matthew stopped her by getting in front of her. You need to get out of here. I don't want you or your unborn child in danger. I'm not losing you like I lost Walter, Matthew whispered. He turned and said, Besides, I got a score to settle with that bastard. What about Kenny? Sarita whispered. Matthew didn't reply. He walked away from the group to follow Kenny. Damn it, neither of them are thinking straight, Luke whispered. He looked into the group and said, We all get out of here. I'll meet up at Parker's Run. Carlos knows the way. He sprinted to catch up to Kenny and Matthew. Zeke looked around the room. He was now feeling anxious. What's wrong? Sarah asked. Something doesn't feel right, Zeke said. Meanwhile, Luke caught up with Matthew and Kenny, and Luke nudged the door open and crept into the room. He saw the cot and he immediately went over to it. He looked over the body that was underneath the covers. It couldn't have been an adult's body, it was too small. It had to be Clementine. He nudged the body and looked around the room for Carver, but he couldn't see him at all. The body was moving, but not in the way to get up. Clem, come on, we're getting out of here, Luke said, whispered. He pulled back the covers to see a preteen boy who was tied up and mouth gagged. What's taking so long? Zeke, Beak, Kenny said, whispered. It's a trap, Luke said. He looked back to Kenny. Suddenly the lights came on and the three men were temporarily blinded. Luke got up, up to see some movement on the behind the chair and the desk. His eyes were adjusted to the light to see Carver holding Clementine at gunpoint. He could say that Carver's original chair had been replaced with a shriveled computer chair. He was expecting them. Good observation, Luke, but it's too late. In the hardware store, the lights also had came on. The group was stunned to see Carver's guards surrounding them. The guards were using assault rifles, so it was a stalemate since Vince's people were also using hunting assault rifles. It seemed like everyone was taking aim at each other. Weapons down, assholes, Troy snapped. Not happening, fucker, Y said. Troy grumbled under his breath. He grabbed the radio and clipped it onto his belt and he spoke into it. Hey boss, they're not backing down. Zeke could hear a muffled voice from the other end. He could have sworn he heard them. Kill them. A satisfied form, smile formed on Troy's lips before he clipped the radio to his belt. Open fire, Troy exclaimed. Get down, the young man exclaimed. He took Becca's hand and ran for cover. Most of the group were doing the same, while Wyatt started firing at Troy, but the man dived down to one of the aisles. Carver's people did as they were told to do and started firing at the group. Bullets flew everywhere, with some finding their marks. Bonnie and Shell were hit several times, times from what Zeke could tell while they were taking cover with Sarah that Bonnie would die in a few minutes, even with medical treatment, and Shell was slightly better off. Alvin and Rebecca took cover with Genevieve, with Alvin was hit in the leg, which caused him to fall down and drop Genevieve. The toddler brawled from the noise hitting the ground. Rebecca ran over and picked her up while Alvin got behind cover. Saria shot back and managed to kill one of Carver's guards, who wasn't paying attention to her. However, a bullet grazed Sarita's shoulder, which forced her to take cover. Zeke got up and fired at several of the guards. He shot one in the head and the other in the abdomen. It would be a fatal shot. He ducked behind the aisles where Sarah was Sarah when he saw the guards aiming at him. Several bullets hit the middle aisle. It was no use. There was no way they were going to survive without help. Clementine looked over to Kenny, Luke, and Matthew. She could tell that Kenny was about to lose it. Let her go, asshole! Kenny snapped. Carver shook his head and said, When will you realize that you already lost? I can read your cripple like a book. 
You ran off without thinking you could run away from your problems. You thought you could keep her from me. Carford gestured to Clementine before aiming back at the free men. You are all wrong. I found when I found out you stayed, you thought you could run away from me again, you new shithole. Again, you're wrong. I found that you there was no way to escape. And now we stand. Your people are being slaughtered down, and soon you will join them. Kenny yelled out in anger and ran at Carver. Carver turned his gun on Kenny and fired the shot. Kenny jolted backwards when he found the bullet hole in his chest. Kenny! Clementine exclaimed. Luke pulled out his handgun and aimed at Carver, but Carver used Clementine as a human shield. Luke was stunned to lower his weapon. Carver then poked out from behind Clementine, aimed at Luke next. Before he could fire, Clementine struggled from his grip and made his miss a shot. You're not going to kill any more people, Clementine exclaimed, as she continued to thrash in his grip. Carver went to pistol whip the girl. However, he gave Luke the opening he needed. He fired a shot into Carver's shoulder, which made him jolt back and released the grip on the girl and the gun. Clementine went to Kenny, who was not getting back up. Well, who was? I'm not dead yet, Kenny muttered as he went forward to Carver. Matthew walked over to attack Carver as well. Carver pulled out another gun. This one was smaller. He aimed it at Matthew and fired, but the shot only grazed him. Regardless, Matthew fell to the ground and yelled out in pain. Clementine went over to Luke and the boy, Gil. He looked over at Carver to aim at Gint, Kenny. He cursed when the gun wouldn't fire. The gun must have been jammed. And with that, Kenny punched Carver over to the cabinet. All right, I guess we're doing the same old-fashioned way, Carver said. He threw a punch at Kenny, which sent him to the floor. It was obvious that he wasn't doing good after the shot. Matthew got up and went over to fight Carver as well. Here, cut him loose. I gotta help them, Luke said, as he handed the knife to Clementine. Clementine nodded and Luke went over to join the fight. She started to cut Gil's bindings off as he, she heard the men fighting in the background. She knew that she didn't have much time to cut Gil loose. Finally, the binding snapped from his wrists and he started to cut the bindings off of his ankles and he removed the gag from his mouth. Clementine finished cutting him loose and looked back. Carver was still being Luke and Matthew. The older man was too strong for them. We gotta go, Gil said. Not without my friends. Clementine said to the boy. She then looked over to see Carver punching Luke in the face repeatedly. She looked over to see the gun that Carver was using earlier. She ran over and grabbed the gun and aimed it at Carver. She took a deep breath and she knew that the revolver would have had a lot of recoil. She fired the gun which knocked her to the ground. She groaned when she sat upright. Her eyes widened. She saw Carver had blood coming out of his mouth and from what Clementine could tell, it was a perfect shot to the heart. But she also saw Kenny behind Carver, and looked like it kept Carver from moving. Kenny! Clementine exclaimed. Both men fell to the ground as Clementine dropped the gun she used to fire it at Carver. Luke then Matthew huffed as they got up. They went over to Kenny while Gil and Clementine joined them. Kenny coughed up some blood and chuckled. You were always a good shot, Clem, Kenny said. Why? Why would you do that? Clementine said, with tears forming her eyes. That son of a bitch saw you. I knew that he would have gone for Luke's gun, Kenny muttered. I was going to die anyway. Kenny, look up. Just hang on, Luke said, but Kenny interrupted him. Just shut up and let me go in peace, Kenny said before he coughed up more blood. My wife, my son, they're waiting for me. What about Sarita? Matthew asked. Kenny looked over to Matthew and said, take care of her. He then turned back to look at Clementine and said, don't give up, Clem. Never let this world make you into something you're not. I'll say hi to Lee for you. Kenny's raspy breathing got even more intense as he said those words. He looked up at the ceiling as Clementine started to cry. A small smile formed on Kenny's face. It was as if peace had found him within himself. It wasn't long until his chest stopped moving and the spark in his eyes were gone. He was dead. The group was pinned down with the remaining guards. Zeke could hear footsteps approaching the aisles as he and Sarah were using it for cover. She, he knew it was Troy, and he was going to shoot them from the other side of the aisles. Zeke aimed a handgun and readied himself to fire at Troy, and as soon as Troy came out, Zeke fired into the gun into Troy's leg. Gah! Troy yelled as he fell to the ground. Zeke went to fire another shot, but the gun clicked. He was out of ammo. 
Troy cursed under his breath as he used to fire the aisles to get back up. Not that it was music to my ears, Troy said. He aimed the gun at Zeke and Sarah. The teenage girl wrapped her arms around Zeke and shook in fear. There was nothing that Zeke could do. If he tried to dive out of cover without getting shot by Troy, the remaining guards would gun him and Sarah down. If he did nothing, he would still get gunned down. However, before Troy could fire a shot, a knife protruded out of his neck. He dropped the gun and started coughing up blood. The knife pulled out from his throat that fell to the ground. Jane stood behind him and shook her head. Before Zeke said a word, she jumped onto a roof of the shelf of the aisles and went to a scuffling halt that the guards were on. Zeke could hear several gunshots, but there was also a sound of bodies hitting the floor as a scuffling of people were choking on their own blood. Several minutes passed by before he heard Jane. All right, they're dead. You can come out now. Zeke whitened. He should kill all those guards, Zeke said. Whoa, Sarah muttered. The group came up from inside, Carlos and Shell. Zeke looked around with several bullet holes through the hardware store. He looked up the scoffing and saw Jane stab one of the guards in the head. Make sure these guys are dead, Jane said to the remaining group members. I... I can't believe this happened, Reggie said. Mike went over to Bonnie's corpse and placed a hand on it. I wish things could have been different, Mike said with a frown. Wyatt walked over to Mike and said, She cared about you too. Mike released a solemn hum in response. Shell? Becca exclaimed. Zeke went over to see Rebecca went into the aisles. Shell was lying on the ground. It seemed that Carlos had finished bandaging her wounds. Will, will she be alright? Carlos huffed and said, she isn't bleeding internally, but her health isn't really good right now. She needs rest, and after that, it's hard to say when she'll ever wake up. Oh my gosh, Becca muttered. Her voice cracked. It sounded like if she was ready to cry. It'll be okay, Becca. Shell's tough, the young man said, trying to comfort her. This was a bad idea, Reggie said. If we just stay in the yard, then none of this would have happened. We had to make a move, Y said. You saw what Carver did to Vince. We should have worked together. Carver may have not been perfect, but he single-handedly get this place up and running, Reggie said. Ed, I could have helped make things better from inside. There's no point on fighting over it now, Jane said as she jumped down from the scuffling. Hurry up and check the rest of the bodies. I need to get to the roof. She walked past them and went to the roof. Thanks for helping out, Zeke said. Jane stopped and looked at Zeke and Sarah. No problem, Jane said before she continued to walk away. Clementine continued to cry as she looked at Kenny's corpse. She had yet, yet another friend be and lost yet because of this world. She was stunned when she heard pained grunts form from the laughter. You, I guess after all this time, you were really weak, spineless coward. It was Carver. I was killing your supposed friends and he hesitated to shoot me. Pathetic, if it wasn't for that redneck, he, I probably would have killed you. Clementine looked over to Carver with a glare. She seethed and looked at the ground for the weapon. You, you, I hate you! Clementine shouted. She found the weapon Foreman Luke's machete on the ground. She got up and walked over the machete. Clem, no! Luke said as he went to stop her. But she slashed at him. It was a flesh wound. Ah! Luke exclaimed as he backed away. He caressed at his new wound. He was shocked that the girl would attack him. That's it. There is my girl, Carver said as he coughed some blood out. Clementine's glare intensified as she looked at the older man. It took a while, but you are really my heir. I die knowing that you'll continue my legacy. Clementine shouted as he put the machete down at the man's head. Clem! Luke exclaimed. I hate you! Clementine shouted. With every word that she shouted, she slashed the man's skull with the machete. He was already dead, but that wouldn't stop her. Matthew, stop her! Luke exclaimed. Matthew crosses his arms and and his chest and said, No, this son of a bitch deserved it. My mommy! Clementine exclaimed as she shoved the slash the man's skull. My daddy! Another slash because of the machete. My baby sister! Another slash. You made our lives a living hell. You killed my friends. The only other person who knew Lee is gone and it's because of you! Clementine exclaimed. As more tears frowned from her eyes, as she hacked the man several more times, 
Blood splattered on her clothes and her face as her breathing got heavier. Finally, out of exhaustion, Clementine dropped a machete into Carver's corpse. Clem, Luke said. He looked, walked over to the girl and helped her off of Carver. She cried in his chest and rubbed her back. It's okay. It's okay. I gotcha. 